Well, thank you, David. It's nice to be back with you and o and Partners again. Uh, another opportunity for me to give an introduction to one of the companies, as you pointed out, that uh, are, is a recommendation of mine and the National Investor, of course, being Luminex Resources. And we'll hear from Marshall Colwell and Scott Hicks in a while. But first, my job, folks, is to give you a bit of a working overview of Ecuador. Uh, and I think at the same time, to dispel some myths that still linger out there. A lot of people today, even in the year 2020, four years after Ecuador kind of burst onto the international mining scene and every major mining company beat a path to their door, there still is some information out there, misinformation, some confusion, uh, just about what is going on in Ecuador. Is their mining industry really, uh, has it been launched effectively? Uh, are there issues there that people need to worry about, about politics and regulation and stuff? So actually, let me go back to where in modern times this all started. It was in the middle of the aughts, as we call it, you know, the 2000 to 2009 timeframe, uh, that in the middle of that decade, there was a major discovery, as a lot of us know, Aurelian Resources discovered what is now the Fruta del Norte gold mine, uh, in southeastern Ecuador. And what happened as a result of that, uh, and people have watched Ecuador for years even prior to that because it is the one conspicuous place in the Andes Mountains in South America that really has never been exploited. And so the excitement that the Fruta del Norte discovery engendered had everybody and their brother beating a path to Ecuador back then. What happened was uh, the country was very ill-equipped to really be able to manage this interest. Uh, and what happened was companies would be granted concessions one day, and then the next day told, oh, wait, we changed our mind. You don't have that concession after all, because some company, uh, company B, let's say, with a fatter envelope under the table came by and they wanted it. So there was a lot of graft, there was a lot of dishonesty going on where you had people within the government that were trying to capitalize on this for their own benefit. And the right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing even where people were honest. So Rafael Correa was elected president. He decided to put a stop to everything, said, wait, time out. We're gonna get a hold of this situation and we're gonna do it right. And one of the things that to this day, people don't understand about that is that when Correa got his hands on things and got the right people in charge, we started to see actually the emergence later of a modern first world transparent mining sector that the country, I mean, it's still growing, it's still fairly young. But what he did among other things was put people in charge who he knew were going to do things correctly. Now here in this first slide, You'll see a picture of myself on the far left. And that is with, in the center of the table, Javier Cordova, who was appointed by President Correa to be his Minister of Mines. And one of the things Cordova in that meeting, and this is going back about four or five years ago, one of the things he reminded me is that rather than Ecuador trying to do things on its own, it was desperately and, and very openly asking for help. What do we do? How do we put this together properly? And among other things, and this was at the president's direction, they brought Wood McKenzie in to help them put together a transparent, sensible, and competitive tax royalty and regulatory environment, which is really what is uh, things today are being done on the back of. Again, still some growing pains, but they decided to get started in the right direction. So President Correa started things out here in this next slide, uh, and I mentioned I mentioned that time frame about four or five years ago. I really need to stress that the year 2016 was the coming out year, if you will, for Ecuador when it really burst onto the scene. Uh, you had these things that had been put in motion uh, after Correa's moratorium on new concessions. Things got opened back up back in 2011. A lot of projects, including this one right here, where you'll see me at the far right. This is at the Cascabel concession up in the northern part of Ecuador. This is one of the biggest discoveries in the world uh, in recent years of a monstrous copper and gold porphyry. Most all of you have heard about this. 
Uh, one of the interesting things about that is that the first major holes really started to come together and coalesce in 2016. The size of this monstrous discovery was getting to be even better understood. And a lot of attention started to turn to Ecuador. Now in this next slide, this is September of 2016. This astounded everybody. The country decided to put on its first full scale, you know, maybe Canada-like or Australia-like big mining symposium. They had way beyond the attendance levels that they thought they would have. You'll see me there with the earphones to understand the speeches that were in Spanish. But this again was really their coming out party exactly as that meeting was going on. You had uh, some jockeying over uh, some big companies, Newcrest, BHP, uh, coming in and trying to get a bigger chunk of Cascabel, trying to get bigger chunks of other things. And it really started the ball rolling in with a lot more speed. Now, uh, here is the next slide. Uh, you'll see, and some of you who have ever been to PDAC, uh, the convention up in uh, Toronto uh, in the late winter time each year, uh, Ecuador had their Ecuador day. They would have a lot of the ministers from the government. They would have companies there and so forth. Here's one instance as the uh, stature of Ecuador was being, beginning to grow ever more, where you had uh, people from Ecuador that were there at PDAC. They were at the Toronto Stock Exchange. And since that time, folks, there's been a concerted effort on the part of the government, on the part of Ecuador's Chamber of Mines, private sector Chamber of Mines, uh, on the part of the different companies that are down there exploring, and now a couple of them, as some of you already know, developing and producing assets. And now on top of uh, shrimp and flowers and uh, petroleum products and oil, those types of things, now Ecuador in the recent past has also started to export copper and gold. So that's been a big deal. And here you see one slide where there's been a major effort. And I think it's been very productive uh, to get the public educated on exactly what it means to now have this big new industry uh, emerging in Ecuador and doing it properly. Uh, the Chamber of Mines has put out information on responsible mining. Here's another really cool slide that they've put out and they've got ones that they've done on cell phones and computers and stuff like that. But just getting the average person to understand, you know, everything that you have. I mean, here, here's, here's a cell phone. There's, there's 30, 32 different minerals and metals in the average cell phone. And so they're trying to get Ecuadorans who desperately need this industry to understand that this is going to be of great benefit to communities. It's going to provide within their own country the things that they need and use all the time to begin with. In Zamora Chinchipe province, this next slide, uh, notable because that's where Luminex's Condor project is, among other big projects in the country. Three quarters of the income to the province is now coming from mining. The people down there know it. The people love it. They embrace it. I mentioned earlier uh, about the Cascabel project in the northern part of uh, Ecuador. And while there is news of one particular prefect uh, in uh, uh, Ecuador, Yaco Perez is his name, who has tried to gum up the mining industry in his area in Azue province, uh, the big city there is Cuenca, uh, you've got the exact opposite in most other places, including where Cascabel is because the Imbabura province there, just like the folks in Zamora, Chinchipe, and just like most of the other provinces, they have gotten to be 110% behind the mining industry. In fact, the prefect in Imbabura province, she is very public in embracing the jobs, the prosperity, the new schools and hospitals, roads, everything that's already being done in that country because of this new industry. Here in this photo, this is the last slide we'll look at, is uh, the current president, Lenin Moreno, who will be uh, ending his term early next year. This is a while back with Christine Lagarde before she turned over uh, the uh, reins of the IMF and went on to the European Central Bank. Uh, Ecuador, as some of you know, is a, a very heavily indebted country. They're in truly a depression right now. And recently when they made a new deal, 
to uh, roll over some of their debt and extend some of the debt to the IMF, a, a, an integral part of the country's game plan to service this debt down the road is going to be from the mining industry. So everybody has got their shoulder to the wheel pretty much the same way. And the best news really I can leave you with with what little bit of time I have is that the two leading presidential candidates next year, both will keep this ship going in the right direction. The only real distinction would be to the degree, but this is a ship that has sailed. People who have followed this understand it. And uh, if you're not already uh, exposed to Ecuador and its bright future, you need to be. So with that, again, thank you for having me, David. Now I'll also be looking forward to uh, uh, an update from my friends, Marshall and Scott.